What up, people? This is D. I'm introducing y'all to a new podcast called Kicking It in the Second Half. This is a spinoff of the Tavern Geek podcast from Tavern Geek on YouTube. Um, hopefully this goes well. This should be our first video. Here with me today, I got two co-hosts. Uh, I got Hugh, the Warriors dude. What up, Hugh? <laughs> what up? Who you wearing? Uh, you know, I got that 30 on my jersey. Steph Curry. Splash, splash, right? Yes, sir. And over here, I also got Cousin Fred, a.k.a. Cuz. What up, Cuz? What's up, man? What's going on? <laughs> hey, what you rocking, bro? <laughs> I got, I got, I got Lonzo before LeBron came. I got Lonzo. Hey, that's retro, though. Hey, that dude might be an all-star later. Yeah, I agree. Good defender. Good which, defender. Is gonna, which is going to get us into the topic. Today is Wednesday, March 3rd, trade day, 2021. And um, our topic today is going to be the NBA all-star game. Uh, mainly just, you know, the upcoming event and also – what we think is going to happen with the draft uh, tomorrow on Thursday, uh, draft predictions. So um, first off, one of the topics we wanted to talk about were, you know, NBA All-Star first-timers, uh, snubs, and subs for the All-Star game. Are you all still with me? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so, yeah, what – uh, what are y'all thoughts on the all-star game selection this year, as far as the players that got in or the players that didn't make it in or, you know, just what all is happening with, uh, players like KD and AD not being able to participate this year and how that affects the game and how it's going to uh, play out. You can go first, Tristan. All right. Um, well, I think, I think obviously being a Lakers fan, I think uh, AD being in it, um, it's probably best for him sitting out after watching uh, watching what happened to KD during the finals when his leg popped. Um, definitely no point in risking it, especially when we still got a playoff run to be making. I definitely agree with that because, you know, when KD came back, it looked like it was a little bit too early. Of course, it was the end of the season already in the playoffs, so, you know, every game counted, but, you know, just taking that risk and, and coming back and a couple minutes into the game and, and then you're out the whole next season. So, you know, obviously yeah. with the Lakers, AD being a huge asset, there weren't any chances of repeating. They're definitely going to need that, that player on hand. So, yeah, definitely agree with that statement there. Uh, Hugh, you got anything you want to add to throw in this conversation with uh, – the all-star game selections, anybody you see on there that think shouldn't made it or what players you think that could have been in there this year or have been in there before that didn't make it? I mean, man, I mean, when you got a league, you know, that has so many stars in it, of course, you know, every year there's going to be people, the players that, you know, everybody feels are snubbed. I mean, this year is no different. I mean, there's, I mean, like I said, it's just a league full of stars and, it's hard to pick. I mean, of course, there's guys that should have made it, you know. <clears throat> Trey Young's a big one. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, Chris Middleton, you know. Uh, Bam, Jimmy Butler, you know, Siakam. I mean, it's a, it's a bunch of guys that, you know, are deserving. But then you have the the whole conversation about who would you take out and East and West Conference and all that. So I'm not going to get into all that. But, uh, you know, I just think everyone that made it, you know, in my opinion, deserved it. I think there's probably – a couple of subs that probably should be in, but I, again, it'd be hard to, or a couple of snubs that should be in, but I think it would be hard to argue, really, like really argue about anyone that did make it. I don't think there's anybody who made it that definitely shouldn't have, but I just think it's going to be a great game. Let me ask you this. Throw out a what if, yeah. want to throw out a what if scenario. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. What if you take, what if we took one player and or open up 
uh, on each conference, the East and the West, open up a ninth slot. Just theoretically, who would you pick to be added to each uh, each team's conference as far as picking one player that didn't make it, throwing them on there? Uh, uh, so any, mm. any position, uh, one Western Conference player and one Eastern Conference player. I mean, I know it's tough because there's people that – lots of people that didn't make it. Uh, make it this year so just pick one I mean for the east I would you know I would I mean, just say Trey Young I mean hands down I mean, he's putting up 26 points per game you know not assist uh he's putting up great numbers and he's a baller and I just it's just uh I think he 100% deserves to be in this game you know obviously I think you definitely see him as a leader of the Hawks team there pretty young team that looks like they're geared oh, yeah. to if they can make a good push, uh, obviously with the coaching situation, they just, you know, fired their coach. Got, uh, I think, Nate McMillan as their uh, uh, substitute coach for the moment. So things could definitely turn around where they definitely uh, can make the playoffs. Uh, you got anybody for the Western Conference that you think should be an all-star this year? Uh, Tristan, you want to take that one? Uh, for the West? Yeah, what you got? Um, you know, I didn't have one thought up for the West. I know for the East, me personally, I would have, I probably would have added uh, Chris Middleton in there again. Um, Western That's side, a- Western side, you know, you could have easily had PG in there, um, just because he's Paul George, he's having a good season, um. Plus, they're fourth in the the Western Conference. Um, I don't know how well DeAndre Ayton's doing, but seeing as how they're the two seed, he's got to be doing somewhat decent. Um, that would be a cool a cool thing for the Suns to see them have yeah. three All Stars in a heavily uh, loaded uh, Western Conference, as far as among the other All Stars that were selected, you know, yep. and then for them, their team to have three which I guess hasn't happened on that conference since the Warriors. Uh, yeah. So another, yeah, that, hey, that would another. be interesting to see him hopefully make an all-star game in the upcoming seasons. Yeah, there's there's one more guy that I thought, uh, maybe if they were, to, they were ranked higher in the, the standings, but Jamal Murray, I feel like Jamal Murray should have easily got, easily could easily be the ninth, ninth pick in the West. Now, all these guys that y'all are mentioning so far, outside of maybe Chris Middleton, I kind of feel like uh, you let me know if y'all agree that maybe the injuries uh, at the beginning of the season or COVID where they're missing games, you think that possibly could have affected them not making the all-star team or uh, somebody like Devin Booker who who didn't make it, but basically as a, as a substitute where he, he might have I missed a bunch of games, but he had a, a slower start to the season uh, compared to where he's at now. Like you mentioned, the likes of Jamal Murray, where we've just seen him recently uh, in February, just kind of gradually go up into this uh, explosive form again, almost what we saw in the bubble, where he had a very slow start at the beginning of the season, where it looks looked like Jokic was the only all-star on the team. Yeah, I feel... I feel he's, I don't know. I feel like he's, he knows Jokic is probably the number one man. And he, I feel like it's, I guess it'd be close to playing with LeBron. You don't want to overstep on their toes. But he's also got to realize that Jokic can't do it by himself. So that's my opinion. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, D, you had a good point. You know, I think COVID probably did play a factor. And, you know, you know, um, people that missed, you know, uh, you know, a number of games with COVID, you know, that I feel like that did probably affect their, you know, how they were voted in. You know, Tatum missed a ton of games. You know, he ended up, you know, making it. And now he even ended up as a starter. But, you know, if he was healthy the whole time, you know, putting up the numbers we're used to seeing from him, you know, he could have been a starter from the get. I mean, you just don't, you know, know how that affects the voting. And, you know, if players are out while the voting is going on, you know, that, in my opinion, probably affects it. 
um, as well, because, you know, they're probably thinking of players that are going off, you know, as they're voting, the day of their voting. And with them out at that specific time, I think it could easily play an effect uh, into that, into the voting. Yeah, I think y'all definitely make some good points as far as uh, rounding out that part of the conversation as far as how the selections went uh, when it came to fan voting as far as the product that they saw on the floor versus uh, how the players had to turn around from a shortened NBA season, especially if you were in the playoffs and obviously more down the stretch gearing towards uh, the teams that made the conference finals. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely exciting to see them uh, step up their game and, and players are getting obviously more conditioned and you're starting to see those um, common name players from last year starting to uh, pick back up to the performance where you think they should be at, or if not better. So, you know, to see De uh, Devin Booker be at his form, like he was in the bubble last season uh, is going to be incredible for the Suns organization with having Chris Paul all there. So um, obviously it looks like Chris Paul's ready to go. So he definitely made the all-star team. Yeah. And um, like I said, to having Devin Booker, that gives them two all-stars on the team. So anytime you have that combination, you're, you're geared to make uh, the playoffs on, on either conference. So that gives you a great shot. Uh, I feel like just to add CJ McCollum would probably be one of those players. If it wasn't for his injury, that definitely would have made the all-star team this year. Oh. Um, might be a strange Easily. day. He probably could have made the starting team over Dame. I don't think he should have, but because of the way voters vote and how Dame kind of gets snubbed, I mean, it would have been a surprising thing to see just because McCollum's improved. I think he could have definitely made the team this year, but unfortunately the, the injury to, to him has uh, put him on the sidelines for right now. But he'll he'll definitely be impactful when it comes to down the stretch and, and the Blazers making the playoffs. They're sitting pretty good right now, as is before, you know, during this uh, break. So even before he comes back, they're in a good position. I think they're maybe in fifth or sixth place in the West. Uh, they're, they're right there with Denver. So I think Denver's in seventh as, a, as of yesterday, and the Blazers were six. Um, so, yeah, during the All-Star game. So, you know, what do, what do y'all guys think about uh, the upcoming selections? That's that's tomorrow. That's Thursday. Um, with the picks of the of the draft, you got Kevin Durant as a captain and LeBron as a captain. And uh, Tristan or Hugh, let me know which one is picking first. Because I think when we did the podcast for Tavern Geek, we said it was LeBron, but I never did follow up to be clear if he had the uh, the most votes or if it was Kevin Durant with the first pick. I thought sure. it was Kevin Durant, but I could be I could be wrong. I thought I heard it was Kevin Durant, but I could be wrong. Don't quote um, me on that. I can look. Um, hey, no question I have is uh, with Kevin Durant uh, being out, is he does he still pick his team? Oh, Bron. Yeah, he's yeah. still the captain and he's still picking the squad. Oh, okay. Yeah, Tristan Brown. said uh, LeBron. Brown gets it first. So yeah. Did you find out that information? Uh, LeBron was first. Okay. Yeah, yeah. LeBron was first. Um, Durant was obviously second. So, I want to ask y'all because I've already had this conversation, and I don't mind having it again uh, since it's so close. Where or who do you think LeBron should go in the direction of drafting his team? Like, consider that you want you think LeBron should go big, or you think he should go guard, or just get players that's kind of similar to his his skill, that's versatile, like Jokic or Luka. Um, so, if you're LeBron, basically, I'm asking who you're picking first, or do one of y'all want to be LeBron and the other be Kevin Durant? How do y'all want to do this? We could do we could do the LeBron versus Kevin Durant thing. That'll be cool. All right, which one of y'all yeah. want to be LeBron? No, Tristan. Tristan, you rocking the Lakers? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's fair. I guess that's fair. Feeling it? All right. So Tristan, you're you're LeBron in this, and Hugh, you are Kevin Durant, and 
I don't have the list of players uh, for the starter. So if Tristan, if you got that pulled up, I do. Might have I do to help too. us out. But first off, let's just okay. All right, well y'all are good. Y'all y'all are more set than I am. So let's just go with the first pick. And if I could kind of analyze how this might go for the team. So uh, yo, Cuz LeBron, what you got? Who, who's going first off the board for you? All right, all right. The first pick. If I was LeBron and I'm genuinely trying to beat this the other best team in the world, I I probably have to pick Giannis first. So you're going Giannis. So by you selecting Giannis, I think that gives you obviously incredible length on the floor. Um, some of the things you might want to look out for after this is is some more uh, three point shooting to surround. Players like yeah. LeBron Giannis. definitely want to face the floor out for Giannis. But uh, but going that, I mean, you know, somebody who can replace Anthony Davis in the situation as far as how LeBron uh, controls the flow of the game. So definitely gives LeBron to play the, uh, the opportunity to play point guard uh, with this, yep. um, this lineup so far of him, the combination of him and Giannis. So I like that pick. So, Hugh, you are Kevin Durant. Um, So, I don't know how to go about this. I don't know if you are Jason Tatum or who is automatically (laughs) on the team, but I I assume that since you're not playing, you just just keep drafting. So, um, I I actually don't know. I should have looked up the details of that. So, right now, you have nobody. I'm just going to go with that route. There's nobody because you're not playing. So <laughs> so far, you're going against Giannis and LeBron. I mean, if you want to, I can throw in Tatum as a what if, just in case they do it that way. But um, I'm not sure who the highest, the next higher vote getter is for the Eastern Conference. I would assume that that person might be the person that's automatically. Yeah. Who is that, by the way? Do you all know? I have no idea. I don't know the the, the, the vote numbers. The second most voted All Star. Yes, on the East, for the East. Um, I know all it says is KD is obviously second. Does it have any order of players total? No, I don't. Uh, I don't see anything about that. Uh, what are the other Eastern Conference players? I could probably figure it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eastern is. Uh, you got Bill Embiid, Kyrie. Okay, well, if this situation happens where they have to take the next highest player, then it probably would be Giannis. But with us already starting this scenario, we're just going to pretend like you have yeah. nobody but yourself. And then you just get Jason Tatum for free. So let's just start you off with Jason okay. Tatum. And okay, that works. from there. So pull the players. Who's your first pick? You got Giannis off the board. So you're looking down the other side. You got Tatum. You're facing Giannis and LeBron. Yeah. So I will go ahead and say that if 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 KD was actually playing in this, that I'm pretty sure his first pick would be Kyrie. I mean, they're just teammates, and you know that's just a a logical thing to do there. But I like it more without KD actually being in it because that is not who my first pick would be. Um, it's a tough one. There's a lot of good guys out there, but I, I have to go with Steph Curry. Uh, it's just hard for me to pass him up. Steph Curry. Now, that is the guy that uh, I agree that should go first on either side, in my opinion, uh, you know, outside of, like you said, honorable mention to, to Kyrie Irving. If you're Kevin Durant, you want to give uh, and show respect to your teammate, no different than what uh, Giannis did for Chris Middleton and LeBron did for Kevin Durant. Um but, but, yeah, Steph, I mean, you know, it's going to be exciting for him again and exciting for fans to see him in the All-Star game because he didn't, didn't get to play in it last year with the injury. So, you know, with what he's done so far uh, in the league, and um, I have to say, uh, you know, I got him in my top five. I mean, he's one of the guys yeah. that right now I feel like is a top five player in the league, which – uh, what I would say puts him in the conversation for a league MVP. So he's definitely having one of those seasons, but definitely going with Steph Curry, especially if this is the scenario where you don't have uh, Kevin Durant 
or any player replacing Kevin Durant on the team. So you're starting off with nobody, uh, assuming that um, Tatum is not automatically selected or, or whoever else. Um, definitely go with Curry. So um, I definitely like Curry here. So that gives you a base. And um, do y'all want to do you know another round of picks? And yeah, let's do it. So um, I'm going to do it different. I know they're probably not going to do it like this, but I'm just going to give – you the next pick because that's fair. If you don't have Kevin Durant, you have nothing to build off of. I want to give you Curry, and then I want to give you your second pick, so you can go ahead and have two people when Tristan picks um, his next one. Sorry, aka cousin Fred. Cousin Fred. Oh, <laughs> uh, so sir, I have next Curry. Pick. So who um, do you want to pick for Curry to make an all-star hmm. team against Giannis and LeBron? But like you said, I would love to pick Bradley Bill right here. You know the the leading scorer in the league this year. But I need a I need a somebody big, and I think I would Do have you want to big? pick Joel Embiid. I have to. I think Joel Embiid. I got to go with Joel I mean, Embiid. I mean, there's going to be big. Well, yeah, I would love that Bradley Bill. There, not I know, a lot, but, but I need. Uh, I need. I'll, I'll take Embiid. Okay, maybe I'll be out there for you. But yeah, I, I like yeah. Joel Embiid as, as a choice for big man. I mean, you got uh, another in my top five player. Got him in my top five. So I mean, you know, right there alone, that's that's high that's high status right there, as far as you know having a player of his caliber on an All Star team, and he's versatile enough to play down low get the rebounds but you know why not make a new splash of running the nba on the all-star team you know joel Embiid on one side sure. steph curry on the other you know knock down one creates space out of nowhere and the other just i'm going to shoot over the top of you so he's not afraid to uh yes sir position three bring the ball down uh from half court and pull it up so yeah that's definitely exciting to see so you know he always brings that trash talk so that's another element of the game that even though it's all star game, they kind of joke and kid around. You know, when Embiid's in the all star game, you know, he's all serious. So that's going to be interesting. I definitely like that bit. So, Tristan, you want to give it another go? Third round? Yeah. So, actually, I, w- I was planning on picking Embiid for my third pick, <laughs> but I respect it. I'll, I, I think I'm going to go with the. In my opinion, the third best isolation scorer to ever play. No, nah, no, nah, I'll say fourth best. Say fourth best isolation scorer to ever play. Best dribbler, in my opinion, to ever play. And I'm going to go with Kyrie. Kyrie. Okay, so, so Kyrie is picked – by LeBron and not Kevin Durant. What a shame. What a shame because Kyrie, you got picked by the guy that you dissed. You got you got picked by the guy. <laughs> and, and and you formed this super team to beat because LeBron's the defending champion. So you're expecting to meet him at at, at worst case scenario. So you know Kyrie, I think he's gonna play for whatever team he's gonna play for. I think he would have fun with that lineup, you know. LeBron, I think, would be generous enough to let Kyrie bring the ball down when he wants to. But with comments Kyrie said with Harden uh, a few weeks ago in the season of Harden playing the point guard and he's playing the shooting guard, why not? Let LeBron play point guard still. So you got you got LeBron, Kyrie, and Giannis. I like it. It's, it's drama. It's dramatic to the <laughs> All-Star game. I mean, this, this, this is television right here. So, yeah. How do you counter this, you? You know, he's got a guard, a versatile big guy, and then uh, another versatile big guy. I know. That's a, that's a, that'd be tough to go against. Uh, you know what? I think, I think that I would get with the next pick, I think I would get 
Ah, I can't believe I'm about to say it's Kawhi Leonard. The claw. Taking my picks, man. <laughs> so you're taking Kawhi Leonard and the claw. So you're actually adding some more defense to your team. So you have yeah, you have Steph Curry. We need some of that. Which is probably the, the most um you know, obviously the prolific scorer or shooter, perimeter shooter. And you have Joel Embiid, so he can play down low, inside out game. And then you just throw through Kawhi in there for defensive purposes and motivational purposes because, you know, <laughs> Kawhi, LeBron, L.A. against L.A. So why not throw that extra motivation in there of, hey, Steph, you know, you didn't win a championship last year. Uh, neither did I. LeBron's over there winning one. Looks like he's he drafted Giannis just because he wanted him to come to LA uh, when he he gets tired of Milwaukee. So, um, so you know you you just you just added a realism to the game. I like that because of of the uh, the defense strategy. So you're definitely thinking this through, and you've got uh, got a nice lineup there. So you got uh, I'm assuming Joel Embiid at the center. Steph Curry in one of the guard spots, um, most likely point guard, and then a small forward. So, uh, so yeah, it's looking like a real battle right now. So, so Cuz, what you got? Um, I'm I'm thinking. I personally don't think um, Jokic would mesh too well with Kyrie, Brown, and Giannis. I think it'd probably be a little too uh, too cluttered, especially with Giannis not really being able to shoot. Um, so I'll, I'll probably have to pick up Beal. I have to pick up Beal, spread the floor a little more. Who are you going with? Oh, you didn't hear me? No, I'm sorry. I got cut out for a little bit. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I, I said. I got cut out right at when, well, I guess, whenever you said the name. Um, I pick Bill. Bill. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like, I like that pick too. I mean, Hugh, you kind of hesitated earlier. You know, you could have ran that, you know, run and gun scheme. Yeah. Bill, that was rough. Bill, I mean, for me, I feel like easy buckets. Easy buckets. Why not? You put Bill on the perimeter and you tell him to shoot when he catches the ball. That's what he's going to do. And that's what what he's going to provide so you know you definitely help to open open the floor up for Giannis and or a LeBron drive but putting Bill there with Kyrie I mean again you have scores on, on either side of the wing but Bill just just catch and shoot you're Ray Allen for a day so yeah. enjoy that yeah. moment <laughs> I like it so Hugh uh you're up All right, well, I'm going to go with another guard. I'm going to get Luka Doncic. I like that. I like I like Luka there with with Curry because of ball pressure relief. And obviously what I mean by that is, you know, if, if for some reason they wanted to try to play some hard defense or just trap them in the corner, you, you've got somebody else who can bring the ball down. Now you also give the opportunity to Steph to play shooting guard. So if Donkic wants to bring the ball down and Steph, you, you just go off, off the, off the down screens um, from Joel Embiid and just, you know, run around the perimeter and then come up through the middle and wide open three or, or just enough space to release the three. And, you know, not helping out a whole lot on the defensive end, but definitely somebody who's going to see plays before it happens. So where Steph doesn't have Draymond Green, he's got Luca. So I like it. I think it fits. I think the team's looking good so far. Um, so we're going to finish out this uh, this first round of starters with with the last two picks. So Tristan, aka Cousin Fred, you got your last pick of the round. Well, well, there's only one less, right? And there one left. Yeah. I got I got Tatum. That's how we said it. Yeah. Oh, so that's I right. Got, I did give you Tatum. So I'm okay. gonna mark you down for Tatum. So I got the Joker. Uh 
That, that might be able to work. I don't know. So you got Jokic, and Hugh, your last pick was... You picked Jokic? Yeah, I got Jokic. That'd be a competitive game, I feel like. Yeah. I think uh I think Team LeBron has me beaten size, obviously, but I think uh I think I got some scores on my team, some shooters, some lethal shooters. I think it'd be competitive. I think it'd be a good game. Yeah, it would be good. I'd like to see I'd like to see Joel and Bean on the switch with Kyrie. That'd be cool. <laughs> But vice versa. I mean, I got Jokic, and he ain't no lockdown defender. So. so, so, so with Jokic, you're hoping that he gets the edge and rebounds maybe over somebody like Embiid. But just his fundamentals alone of understanding the game. If you just have a simple box out from Jokic and yeah. have Jan gather the the rebounds or LeBron and just push for a Showtime break, you know, just just throw it down the court. Um, either either player, you know, Jokic, LeBron. Let's let's see some big guys bring the ball down between uh, between Embiid and Jokic, um, and, and a little two minute battle of the bigs, uh, isolation ball, <laughs> just for, for, for fun and uh, sometime in the first half. Yeah, I'm gonna like honestly to on a one one v one. I'm gonna have I'd probably have to give that to Embiid. I feel like I feel like Embiid has just got more more ball handling than than Jokic does. So you're giving him the one v one in like a half court setting. Yeah. So it doesn't 1v1. matter if he's already in the post or not. Just get just one v one. Yeah. Street ball style. I'm giving it to Embiid almost every time. Let's just say let's just say if it's the fourth quarter, and there's ten seconds left, and it's game seven of the championship, I'm 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 posting Embiid up on Jokic rather than Jokic being posted up on Embiid. So and 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 uh, just to connect to what you were saying of as far as the game seven situation on championship, uh, not to get too far off topic, where do y'all see the Sixers? They nope, they can't do it. Hugh, uh, I don't think anyone in the East is going to beat Brooklyn at this point. I guess I'm playing the uh, the underdog here. Uh, that's my pick. <laughs> I know you. I know you. Are. I'm riding with it. Um, like I said, the Nets got a lot to prove, and yeah, they very well may prove me wrong. But I'm I'm feeling Philly. I was feeling Philly last year, but you know the Celtics knocked them out. So at that point, I thought maybe the Celtics had had the the shot of going to the conference finals. But I like where uh, where Philly's at right now. I like that Joel Embiid's healthy, but I love the fact that they have Doc Rivers. So that's yeah. that's somebody yeah. with the championship caliber experience on, on how to coach this team and how to how to manage his player. So that that plays a lot of uh, um, a lot for me into the way the uh, game is orchestrated for certain players. Um, just to contradict with Brooklyn, um, what they were saying in the preseason before they had Harden, where Kyrie and basically Kevin Durant following up with the statement that uh they don't need a coach so hopefully they have a, a a change of heart later on when it gets in those situations where the coaching does matter i mean yeah they're they're cruising so far with hard and taking the lead but at the same time right now with these uh the pairing of either harden or Kyrie, or when it was Kyrie and durant it hasn't been a lot of games of of all three of them together, so they still need to grow as as a unit. But but yeah, I mean Brooklyn's looking pretty good too. So I mean I don't I don't have uh, a uh, you know I don't do have y'all want to do the second round or do y'all just want to give a shout out to a few players. No matter uh, me, I'm down for whatever. It's up to you, D. We're still here, so I mean. You know, we can easily just keep this thing going. Yeah, we can do that. I got uh, everything pulled up. Yep, I got it. 
Hugh, you got your list? Hugh, you got your list? Yo, yo, what's up? Do I have my list? <laughs> yeah, you got your list Sorry, I had for the, uh, the second round of pit players for the draft? Let's do it. All right. Well, if it's true to how it's uh, being played out, the second round will go to Kevin Durant. So, Hugh, you're All right. So from the, your team from the initial now, uh, for for the bench, the second unit, so to speak. Okay. Um. And so just to just to verify that, right? Anthony Davis is not in it, and he got replaced by Devin Booker, right? Right. Okay. I'm just clarifying. I want to make sure I know, you know, everybody that's in it. Uh, and then Sabonis took Tatum's spot, right? I guess that's how you look at it, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, probably with my first pick. Yeah, you know, with my first pick, it would go to Damian Lewis. Uh, I think – probably the biggest underrated superstar in the league who no matter what he does always doesn't seem to get the credit he deserves so he would definitely be my first pick yeah i like i like what you did there with the uh, the shout out for the you know discrediting damon Lillard across the board you know when it comes to the league and just perspective of them you know there's so many great guards even in, in the western conference but yeah uh, it sucks for him just to be the, that type of player that should be a starter, but ends up, you know, on uh, coming up, coming out as a reserve. So, but Damian Lillard definitely worthy of a starter spot on either conference. So you picking up Damian Lillard is just um, somewhat of a counter to Steph Curry. I mean, it would have been great to see them both on the same team. Um, just, you know, be hard to stop, you know, being able to shoot anywhere on the court as far as, you know, logo alert. So I, I like it. It's a great pick. Probably the Appreciate best it. choice you can make for the second. Yes, sir. Because I was that was a tough pill to swallow. It was probably obvious that that was going to happen. But yeah. You got to follow that up. Yeah, that, that was, that was going to be my pick as well. Um, but, I mean, James Harden's not a, not a bad pick either. Yeah. Um, Especially with how no. the way he's been, the way he's been passing here lately, um, I mean he's he's getting over ten assists a game with, you know, only one All Star, two All Stars playing, so a whole a whole team of five with All Stars is probably be pretty easy for him to drop a couple, couple of assists. Plus, you know, him on a switch with the pick and roll, um, be pretty hard to guard that step back. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with uh, James. I like that. I like James Harden there um, because now you're putting him with his teammate Kyrie, uh, something I would have expected Kevin Durant to do. But, you know, obviously these are some personal things we're tying into this draft, but, you know, Mario <laughs> would be another, you know, disappointment as far as team chemistry coming up in the season for when he returns. So for him to – not just not take, you know, Kyrie, but to not have either one of his players that made the all-star game with them would definitely be uh, something the media would get a hold of and kind of rip apart <laughs> as in, you know, these guys are doing their own thing or I don't care if I, if I have these guys or not, just give me two other all-stars on the team. I'd make it work. So, but definitely a great pickup to, uh, in this scenario pick up James Harden. Yeah, yeah, James. So, uh, he's a we'll just hey. do a quick rundown. Um, yeah. I was going to say, um, yeah, I was going to say that, uh, you know, when the playoff push comes and, and LeBron and Brian are going against each other in the playoffs, he's just going to whisper in their ear, just be like, remember who picked you. Remember who picked you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see that. Yeah. Love to see that. Before I break any more players down, 
I'm gonna let y'all kind of wrap this up as far as the draft. And then if we need to shout out any players when we're done, we can. I know um I think we probably got about what six or seven more players on, on both sides for a total of like 14 players to finish drafting. So if y'all want to go back and forth with the draft and finish this off, and uh th that'll be great. Yeah. So Hugh, okay. this would be your your turn to pick Kevin Durant uh with your your netless team here because <laughs> yeah. you're not even, uh, I think we're... Uh, you have no nets on team Durant <laughs> it's tough um I think with my next pick I would I need to I need to go size a little bit I think and uh I think I need to get somebody you know pretty big so I think I would pick Vucevic with my next pick Vucevic, another big. Yeah, a significant Let's pick. go. Let's go. All right. I think I think I'm gonna have to get part of the banana boat. Um plus I think Chris Paul's IQ in the fourth quarter match with LeBron's IQ in the fourth quarter. I'm gonna have to go with Chris Paul. I like the banana boat reference. I like that. Like that. <laughs> Guys who automatically make great teammates. All right, my next pick. Uh, I I would have to go Zach Levine. He's having an amazing year, scoring a lot of points, helping out that you know that Chicago team. And uh, I gotta go. I gotta go Levine. Shout out to the first timer. Yes, sir. Um, I'm stuck on two. I, I'm 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 gonna go Paul George just because he's been there before. Um, plus I, I think I trust him a little bit more on defense than I do Jalen Brown. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go with Paul George. Paul George. Yeah. As long as he's not hitting the side of the backboard, you're pretty strong with the three yeah. points shooting there. <laughs> yeah. Playoff P. Um, Playoff P is different than all-star P. So <laughs> With my with my next pick, I'm gonna go with another another first timer, a uh, guy who's having an amazing season. I'm gonna pick Julius Randle. Yeah, it's a good pick. Giving these young guys time to shine. I, I like that. You know, the first timers being together. Um, if they're on the court at the same time, they both can kind of play um, maybe more comfortably. So, um, my next pick. Just because he's an absolute beast in the paint, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to pick Zion. You took my pick. <sighs> Zion, I want to see some lobs. Yeah, Chris Paul and Zion, and LeBron and Zion. That that'd be fun. All right, I'm gonna have to go with uh, everybody considered the biggest snub before he got in, but I'm gonna have to go with uh, Devin Booker. D book. Playing against his teammate. Shout out, shout out, shout out, Phoenix, second in the West. I'm, I, I, I'm gonna go Rudy Gobert. I'm gonna go big. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the Stifle Tower. There you go. Well, to match that, I'm gonna go with uh, Sabonis. It's a good pick. So who's left? Uh, Jalen Brown, Donovan Mitchell, and Ben Simmons. Simmons. Yep. Ooh. I think I I might need a little more defense. I'm I'm gonna mess up some more chemistry. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go Jalen Brown. Ah man. All right. And then with my last pick, I would go Donovan Mitchell. Shout out Utah. I got the best shooter in the league, then Ben Simmons. <laughs> best dude. It's a three point himself, huh? <laughs> this would make a great on TV rivalry because you're talking uh, between y'all's two teams. You got Embiid on one side, Simmons on the other, Jalen Brown on one side, Tatum on the other, Mitchell, and then Rudy Gobert on the other side. 
I mean, there's absolutely no real pairing here outside of maybe uh, uh, Cuz representing the banana boat 2012 Olympic team. I mean, there's there's nothing here. Well, I'll take that back. You got James Harden and Kyrie on the opposite team of KD. their own teammate. So, <laughs> so there you go. But everything else looks like definitely a battle, a good matchup to, uh, I mean, PG and Kawhi on opposite teams. I, I would definitely love to see this. You know, um, one thing I talked about in the other podcast is I mentioned that how the All-Star Games format last year with the with the Kobe rule of the last uh, quarter where they turn off the, the timer and set the score to 24 points above the leading team's uh, score at the time, uh, at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And uh, they just play it out to that point mark. And um, last year, just watching that game, it just made the game more more interesting and more fun, but they uh, definitely played some, some defense to make it more realistic. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that and seeing how, you know, if it is a comeback type of game or if it's just close competitive, what kind of substitutions they make or what kind of uh, just for lineup purposes. Like if you got Steph Curry out there, you know, you're going to want maybe some length on the floor to cover that. You, you might want to take out the, the bigs if you need speed to uh, cover LeBron's team. If he's got, you know, Bill, uh, Zion and let's just say, you know, Ben Simmons out there and, and maybe Jokic, so, like people that can just get the ball down the court fast and, and Giannis, you know, um, just you, you're talking like, you know, one dribble full court um, where four guys are touching the ball because they're just set up for passing and, and has that, that court vision. So I definitely think y'all did a great draft. Um, this would definitely be made for TV. So I, I would love to see these two teams lined up. Uh, this would probably make a great, great team uh, battle for if it was 2K. But yeah, that's probably the only way we're going to really see uh, oh, yeah. these rosters come up. But, but yeah, I mean, this was a, a great, great way to uh, wrap up our main topic of the All Star game. Um, you know, as far as where we, uh, what we started off talking about and where we're going to head into for Thursday's draft. And, you know, maybe the, the next one we do, we can kind of have it where we discuss, you know, the effects of what happened in the draft. If, if something where winds up happening where Kyrie or, or James Harden aren't drafted by Kevin Durant, but, um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, I think y'all, y'all did a great job. Um, Appreciate it. Is there anything y'all want to add to wrap up this um, the All Star Game predictions here? Any any bold predictions about what you might see or what you want to see during the game, or anything you have uh, tasteful to say about how they're doing uh, All Star Weekend in general, as far as it being just Sunday, from my understanding, for all the events. I I like. How it's just one day. I think it. I think it. I just prefer it more when it's clumped all together. It's just you know more fun for me personally. I enjoy you know watching it. How I think that the the dunk contest is a halftime. I mean, it'll prolong the halftime, but I like it that way. And as you know, the game you said, just you know, with just when they just play defense, it's just a lot more fun to watch. I mean, I know it's nice to put two hundred points up in a game when neither side's playing defense, but uh, you know. These are the best players in the in the league, and it's it's good to see them, you know, given a hundred percent or as close as to a hundred percent as you could expect with, you know, no playoff implications or anything with this game. But uh, yeah, just good defense, and you know, I'd like to just see a, a great close competitive game, and may the best team win. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, I'm hoping that also with what you said about the uh, halftime dunk contest, maybe that'll give the players more rest. Because you're talking like a dunk contest yeah. usually takes uh, at least two rounds. I think the format that they do it in, and you know, first round four dunkers, second round two dunkers. So 
Um, so, you know, the halftime could be a little bit longer, maybe give players that extra rest and maybe strategize a little bit for that fourth quarter uh, defense that we hope that they're going to play again. Yep. Your cousin Fred, what do you think about the All-Star game coming up? Um, I, I like the format. The only thing maybe that would – that I – I guess I'm kind of opposite. Um, I don't know if I like the, the, uh, the dunk contest in between. The game, I feel like it might might put people uh, that that are hot and take them off of their little hot streak. Um, but I think there's only, if I remember, I think there's only three people this year instead of four. Yeah, yeah, it's three. Um, yeah, so it's, it should shorten it up quite a bit. Um, I'm honestly not really okay. excited to watch. Yeah, the I think it was, it's Simon, one of them from Phoenix, uh, from Portland. Yeah, Cassius Stanley and then Obi Toppin. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, when Cassie Stanley went, went to Duke, I'm pretty sure his vertical was higher than Zion's. I do remember him. Really? That. That's, that's yeah. what they were putting out there, uh, for that, well, I guess it's like the pre-camp or, or the, the training camp for Duke before their season started when they did the measurements, it yeah. did say that he had broke uh zion's record which was uh literally the uh the following year after zion had left duke that's crazy that's crazy so, yeah hopefully we could see him jump over somebody yeah maybe three people <laughs> yeah right uh, i got a question for you Derek. yeah what's up um if you could pick your your starting five for the all-star team who are you who are you going with Uh, what do you think? Um, which side do you want me to pick from as far as if I'm Kevin Durant or LeBron or just? Um, well, I, you're a KD or fan, pick, right? Or just pick five. I, I'll probably I'll lean more towards LeBron than KD. I was definitely a KD fan, you know, right, yeah, right here. But um, times have changed. I don't hate the man, actually. Um, uh, I think he's definitely a great scorer and somebody I, I like to watch so all right yeah well you'll you'll take LeBron's shoes in I'm taking LeBron so um yeah if I definitely got first pick uh I said this before I'm gonna roll with Steph Curry uh, I think I'd be interested to see because they just had so many battles before so never really had the, the chance to match up um so I would definitely want to take uh Curry with my first pick because he'll definitely help me space the floor whenever I need it and somebody else who can bring the ball down uh, at times I don't feel like it. Um, so if I, if I took uh, Curry and theoretically if, if uh, Katie took Kyrie, I guess it would be my pick again. And let's see, looking at who y'all had selected, I would probably – I would pick uh, Giannis then. So if Giannis was available with LeBron's second-round pick, Assuming he's not the one replacing Kevin Durant as the, uh, the you know, the primary starter for the the other side, I would definitely do that. So then you kind of put yourself at uh, somebody who can catch your lobs and and be down low for when you need that that big that's just going to dunk it down, uh, no problem for the easy flush. And then obviously with Steph Curry uh, spacing it out. And then uh, so if I'm Kevin Durant and uh, Kyrie's taken. Um, I probably would still go maybe um, um, Embiid since um, since you mentioned him and um, take Embiid just with, with you know his attitude and his personality. You can't go wrong having that versatile big. Uh, yeah. So he would be the pick there. Um, you know, all this is assuming that if, you know, also if Kevin Durant was playing uh, so going back to LeBron's side, so after LeBron, um, LeBron, uh, Giannis, and who was the other person I just said? Sorry, Curry. I would probably go, I would probably go Kawhi just so I could, um, you know what? Now, I would probably go Beal just from a strategic move because of 
You know, he also has uh, the three-point range ability, but I would go Bill just to kind of incentivize of like, hey, this is, this, you know, how I play in my game if you ever wanted to come to L.A. So it would work on a different front outside of just the All-Star game. If I'm thinking like how LeBron's thinking because he thinks past this game, yeah. you know, it's just an All-Star game. Uh, that for strategic purpose, I would do Bill. And then uh, going back to Kevin Durant, um, you know, I, I would take – I would probably take Kawhi because you want to want something to kind of counter LeBron as far as, you know, defensive capabilities and stick on that end. And then going back, um, going back to LeBron's side, I guess you're kind of left with uh, Luca and Tatum. So you can go one way or the other here. You can, you can basically force the bigs to the other side with, um, you know, where you, select Luca and have Jokic paired with Embiid or just um, have um, Luca as, as another ball handler and, and floor general. But, but I, I think I would take uh, Jokic here. That way I, I just have another big, but you also still have that playmaker. So, um, you know, he's able to find Giannis easy. So I would like to see a lot of hockey assists where, you know, maybe uh, LeBron finds um, Jokic and then Jokic finds Giannis for the flush and or Curry for the splash. So then you're, you're left with Luka over there on the other side on Kevin Durant's team, which gives you another ball. So that would be my pick, just theoretically. Like I said, if Kevin Durant was actually playing and, and, and uh, I was choosing, so. I like it. I like it. That's nice. It's fine. But yeah, um, I appreciate having y'all guys on. Um, you know, I, like I said, hopefully we could do another podcast here soon after uh, this draft. Uh, hopefully maybe before the All-Star game or, or right after the All-Star game as a review. Um, y'all want to give any shout outs for social media as far as y'all's availability? Or y'all just want to keep it locally here? on kicking it in the second half. I'll keep, I'll uh, keep it local. Yeah, I'll keep it local right now as well. All right. Hey, that's the crew right here, you know. <laughs> People in here get our lineup right. But, you know, we got Cousin Fred and we got Hugh tonight. So, you know, this is this is the beginning. But like I said, this should be the first episode here. Um, about to make a YouTube page, hopefully, and, and make this the first video on there. If so, the YouTube you could find us at Kish, K-I-S-H-Y-Z, uh, for kicking in the second half. And hopefully we'll have a, a like a Twitter or other social media coming soon. But yeah, I appreciate you guys coming on and can't wait to do this of again. Of course, thanks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thanks for having us. Good time. Peace.